Hi, Alex Berry here. Today we're going to be talking about the new R6 and R8. We're going to be going through the features and some of the options that are on these boats and want to point out that we're using an R8. The R6 and R8 are virtually the same boat with the exception of the length. They're the same beam, same interior layout, they have basically the same performance characteristics other than just the difference in the length. And so they're pretty much the same boat. So let's get started. Let's get started by identifying the components on the deck of the boat. Starting at the very nose, the bow of the boat, we have the red and green combination bow light. This comes on with your nav light switch. And in addition to that, up on top of the arch or the bimini top, you'll have a white all around light. Between the two, you have international lighting, which is good everywhere. If you don't have either the arch or a bimini top, then there will be a plug-in light which is stored in the ski compartment when you're not using it that plugs in on the rear corner of the boat, there again making the boat compliant with international lighting rules. Behind the bow light up here on the deck is the anchor locker, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Behind that is our bow cleat, and working our way aft, the next thing we're going to run into is the optional Sirius XM antenna. This particular boat has the Sirius XM option hooked up to the stereo system and that does require an external antenna and this little dome right here is that antenna. The next thing we're going to point out is the horn vent right here. It is watertight, it's an electric horn, nothing you ever need to worry about other than to make sure nobody's in your way. Behind that is our spring cleat. Two of them, one on each side. All cobalts have them. They're used for tying the boat fore and aft to keep it from moving in the slip. And uh, it's a really nice cleat that you'll find you'll use a lot. Next item back here is the fuel fill. It's a very simple cap that just simply flips up. Quarter turn comes right out. It's on a lanyard so that it will not fall into the lake because it will not float. Underneath that, there is a chrome fitting, which is the fuel tank vent. You never need to worry about it, just wanted you to know what it is. Working our way back, the next thing is the air vents, one on each side, intake and exhaust for fresh air into the engine room. Behind that is our mount for the fender clips. There's four on the boat, two on each side, two forward and two aft. It simply plugs in with your fender already on it and you're set. No adjustment necessary other than the very first time. Behind that is your stern cleat, one on each rear corner. So we have a total of six cleats on the boat, three on each side. Ample opportunity to tie up the boat securely to any kind of a dock. Over here on the port side of the boat there's a few things to make note of. Up here on the top of the deck is a receptacle for the optional flagpole, which just plugs in, quarter turn locks in place. Right here is the water fill. This particular boat has the optional shower mounted on the transom. There's a 10 gallon tank built into the boat that you fill from right here. This simply pops open, you unscrew it, fill it up, screw it back in, push that back in place, no tools needed. Below that is the vent for that water tank. It is a 10 gallon tank. There's an electric pump in the boat. So when that pump is energized, it'll bring pressure into the system. Once the pressure is reached, it shuts itself off. Your shower is ready to use anytime you want. And we also have the vent, just like the one on the starboard side over here on the port for air in and out of the engine room. Let's talk about the features of the bow compartment of this boat. We'll start right here with this starboard side forward facing seat. Two things. One has an armrest that comes down and that is a structural armrest. It will take some weight. And there's one on the other side as well. 
What's really nice about this is the storage underneath it. This seat is hinged and just lifts up. It's on a gas cylinder, so it holds itself open, exposing this enormous compartment ahead of the dash. It's got serviceability of all of the amplifiers for the stereo system and tons of room to store tables, whatever you want to put in there. It's just a really handy area for storage. We have nice handrails on the sides for your passengers to hang on. Moving up here, this front cushion comes up and there's a huge storage area underneath that. Over on this side, another storage area which is hinged and opens once again with a gas cylinder to hold it up so that it's not going to fall on you and you've got a whole bunch of room underneath there and that storage area just like this one has a nice uh, cushioned floor to protect that stuff that you put down there. Up on the nose of the boat we've got the anchor locker. It's a story in itself. So it simply opens, it's on a gas cylinder, there again, so it's not going to fall on you when you don't want it to. And this particular boat has the windlass. But assuming that it doesn't, then this is just an open locker. Couple of things. On the back side of the bow eye, you will find a nice stainless steel ring. That is for the bitter end of your anchor line. You always want to have that anchor line, the end of it, tied to the boat so that when you deploy it, it just all, all of a sudden go away. So that's what you tie your bitter end of your anchor line to, is that ring on the back of the bow eye. This locker is a flooding locker. In other words, water that gets in here does not come into the boat. It goes over the side. So any water that gets in here from the anchor, from rain, from whatever, goes over the side, does not get into the boat. This particular boat does have the windlass system, which is a really nice anchor system. First and foremost, it's 100% chain. No line, it's all chain, which means you don't have to deploy near as much of it to get a good hook. The chain itself helps hold that anchor down so it can get a good bite on the bottom and so on. It's just a really nice system. It's an electric system where you just push a rocker switch. There's one right here underneath my hand to run it up or down. There's another one on the dash but you don't want to use the one on the dash unless weather conditions prevent you from coming up here to run this one. If at all possible, you want to run it from here. As good as these systems are, they're not 100% trouble-free. And occasionally you might get something that was stuck in the chain and jammed the system or something, and you can watch for that and prevent it from happening. There is a safety lanyard in here which is hooked to the anchor when it's in the housed position, which it is right now. This is a line with a hook on it that's hooked to the anchor itself. And that way, that anchor can't be deployed by accident. Once you have removed this, you can lower the anchor with the rocker switch. And you can let it down to whatever depth you need. Once you're done, you can pull it back up and it automatically houses. That's all there is to raising and lowering. Once you get it back in place, put the hook back on and cleat it on the cleat that's permanently right here and you're all set. That way nobody can accidentally drop that anchor when you don't want them to. A little safety note. We're going to talk about the electric panel little bit later on, but one of the circuit breakers on that panel is for this windless system. It's a real good idea to have that turned off, except when you're actually using the anchor. That way, little fingers, prying eyes, whatever you want to call them, can't accidentally start playing with that anchor system. They can rock that switch all they want to, either here or at the driver's dash, and nothing's going to happen. So you just turn that switch on when you want to use the anchor windlass and turn it off when you're done. All the Cobalt bow riders have walk-through doors so that in conjunction with closing the center windshield door and closing your walk-through doors, you get a really nice air break on a cooler day 
opens up boating for a longer season. The doors are very simple to operate. You simply release the spring-loaded latch, slide the barrel bolt to the open position, <clears throat> close the door, throw in the barrel bolt, latch it, and you're ready to go. It's just that simple. Let's talk about the floor storage in this boat. We'll start up here in the bow area. There's an, a lid right here with a latch. You give it a quarter of a turn. It's on a gas cylinder and you have a nice compartment down there. It is not designed to be 100% watertight, but it's also got a false floor as it's called in there. So it's not sitting right on the bilge. So any water that gets in there will drain through it in the pre-drilled holes in that floor and get to the bilge to the back of the boat where that water can be pumped over the side. So things will stay relatively dry in there, but if it's something that's really sensitive to water, you don't want to use that compartment. Like all of these latches in the floor, they are stainless steel and they are lockable. So you can put some good high dollar stuff down there. Working our way aft, we have the ski locker. And the ski locker has two lids, one long locker. That lid opens by simply, once again, turning the latch a quarter of a turn. And it's on a gas cylinder. And we have a pad down there so that your high dollar toys won't get damaged. Inside this compartment, on the port side of it, on the vertical bulkhead, is stored all of the poles and so forth for the bimini top. Your navigation light if you need one down here. And the flagpole. They're all stored in rubber coated clips so that they're not going to be rattling around. Once you're done with this compartment, there again, it's a lockable latch. Just close it, quarter turn, and it's latched. Continuing on with the ski locker, there is a second opening for that compartment. Again, the stainless latch in the floor. It is a lockable latch. It's on gas cylinders. It gives you the ability to put something really long in that locker. That locker starts here, goes way up to the front of the boat. It's a huge locker, tons of room. Once again, it's got those rubber mats in there to protect that equipment that you might put down there. In the aft end of this compartment, there appears to be another lid with no latch. In fact, it's a service port for your dealer to get at the fuel tank and related components. It is sealed in place and there's nothing you need to worry about. It is not something you can open. Let's talk about the head compartment area. The head door itself includes the lockable glove compartment. Great place to throw those wallets, watches, any kind of valuables you want to keep out of sight. And again, it is lockable. The door itself has a stainless latch on it that you simply pull the two levers together and you can open the door exposing the head compartment itself. The head compartment comes with, as standard equipment, the porta potty, which is what we're looking at right now. As an option, you can get the electric flush toilet. That toilet has a built-in holding tank in the boat and it has a through hull fitting in the engine room with a sea strainer that feeds flushing water to the toilet. That electric toilet is not using the fresh water from your water system in the, in the boat. It uses outside water for flushing. That system has a deck waste pump out fitting right ahead of the windshield on the left side, on the port side, and uh, that's where you would take your boat to the marina and they will pump that system out for you as needed. It's a very nice option. There is a black rubber button down there with that option that you simply push to flush that toilet. It empties the contents of the bowl and brings in flushing water at the same time. Working our way aft from the uh, head compartment area, the first thing we come to is this nice double wide seat. It has the cobalt flip up feature, flip lip feature, whatever you'd like to call it. And the backrest is hinged, making for a nice long lounge area. Underneath here is a storage area that you flip up this cushion, exposing a really nice large area. This is not a watertight area or a ice chest. It's simply a storage area. Any water that might get in here from rain or whatever will simply run to the bilge where the pumps can take it over the side. To put this cushion back in, it simply slides into place. 
you can push this back and you're all set. Working our way back into the cockpit from the seat we just talked about, we come to this side seat on the port side, exposing a huge compartment underneath. In that compartment there is a small trash container which can be removed any time to throw out the small stuff. Also the ski pole is stored in here which you would install on the back of the boat for slalom skiers, wakeboards, that sort of thing. And there's also a mount for the optional dinette table. In the back of this compartment we have two things that are very important. One is a fire extinguisher. There's a placard right out here noting that it's in this compartment and it's right there where you can grab it real quickly should you ever need to. Right next to that is the main electric panel. Circuit breakers, battery switch, and so forth are all mounted right there. They're all circuit breakers, no fuses, and there's a placard right below it noting what each switch does. Two things I want to talk about. One is the battery switch, and number two is the power for the windlass. One of the circuit breakers down there has a red button on it, and that button you can push and that disconnects or turns off power to the windlass system. That makes it real easy to reach in there. With one finger you can push on it and disconnect the power to the windlass. When you do that, there's a little yellow lever that pops out of the bottom of that circuit breaker switch. And to reset that, all you do is push that little yellow lever back up and the power is back to the windlass. The most important part of the panel back here is the battery switch. It's a three position switch powered by the two batteries that are in the engine room. In the off position you have isolated the boat basically. That's where you want the boat to be at the end of the day when you're putting it up on the hoist, putting it on the trailer, tying it to the dock, whatever. When you're done for the day go ahead and turn that battery switch off. The only system left with power when the battery switch is off is the automatic bilge pumps, of which there are two on this model. So those, are ha those have power anytime, no matter what the position of that switch is. Normally when you run the boat, you're going to have it in position on. And what's really nice about that is we have an automatic charging system built into this cobalt, as we do with all cobalts and have for many years. In the on position, but the engine off, we're only using one battery. The other battery is being held in reserve by the system for restarting the engine. So you can be out on the anchor all day long, running the stereo system, lights, whatever, and at the end of the day, you're going to have plenty of power to start restart that engine because the, there's a battery being held in reserve to do that. Then the system, the automatic charging system, will take over and it'll charge whichever battery it needs to. So assuming that one that you've been using all day is pretty low, it'll start charging that and bring it back up for you. You don't have to do a thing. It's all automated. There is a third position to this switch and it's called combine. That's for emergency use only. So when you go to restart your engine, nothing happens. Go ahead and turn the switch to the combine position and restart your engine. In essence, what that does is it takes those two batteries and combines them into one bigger battery. And your engine, in all probability, is going to start right up. Once it does, give it 20, 30 seconds, turn it back to the on position. The automatic charging system will take over and charge whichever battery it needs to to bring them back up. It's a really neat automated system. All you do is turn it on and go boating and you don't have to worry about switching back and forth from different batteries in the boat. It's all automated. Tried and proven. Working our way up the starboard side of the cockpit, just ahead of our walkthrough area, there's a seat that lifts up. It's on a hinge, and underneath that we have a trash container. It's the same size container as the one on the other side, which we showed you a few moments ago, so they're interchangeable. And by the way, there's quite a bit of room underneath there if there's some stuff that you want to put in the boat that you're probably not going to get at very often. Right ahead of that is the main ice chest in the boat. We have a removable igloo cooler. Additionally, as an option, 
we have a soft-sided cobalt cooler which will go in in place of this igloo cooler which is really a handy item because you can take it ashore very easily and it's multi-purpose because it, it holds an awful lot. It holds more than this igloo cooler does. So it's really a nice option to have. You can always add that at any time. So we've got the main ice chest, we've got the igloo cooler in there, and you can put in the cobalt soft-sided cooler if, instead of that if you'd like. Now we're at the really fun part of the boat, the dash area. We have our two Garmin screens, which is standard on almost all Cobalts, and this particular boat is set up with the optional 12-inch screens. Even if you don't get those larger screens, all the information is there no matter what. So the larger screens are just a little easier to see. One last thing on the Garmin screens. They're really fun to show off to your friends. When you turn on the ignition key without starting the engine, the engine itself doesn't know you did that. The screens will come up just as if the engine were running. And the difference is, is that no hours will be accumulated on the hour meter and the engine doesn't know that it has power to it because it doesn't. It doesn't get its power until you physically start the engine. So leaving these illuminated doesn't hurt a thing, doesn't do a thing. So you can sit at the dock and play with these screens all you want to without the engine running and have a great time learning how to run the system to your particular style. Below them are our controls for the different systems in the boat. The bilge blower, the bilge pumps, docking lights, underwater lights, whatever. It's all right here. On the left side of the dash over here we have the stereo control. And by the way, there's another one on the back of the boat as well. Over here to the right of the dash is a cell phone charging station. It is really slick. You just pop your phone in there, let it clamp down on it, and it, all, it starts charging your phone, assuming that your phone is set up for wireless charging, as most of them are these days. Right below that is an engine screen, which is a duplication of the information that's already on the Garmin screens. So it's always nice to have two of anything, so it's just another way of monitoring the function of the engine and the drive. Of course, we have our steering wheel, which is adjustable tilt wheel. Over here, we have a few items that are very interesting. One, we have our windlass control, and I like to consider that to be for emergencies. Normally, as I mentioned earlier, you want to run that windlass from up on the bow in the anchor locker compartment. Just below this is the charging port for your cell phones. Now, this one is a little different than the rest of them in the boat, of which there are several. And the ones in the rest of the boat are just a USB hookup, and they're simply for charging your cell phone, your iPad, whatever, it need, whatever you need to charge using a USB port. The difference is, this one will do that too, however, you can also plug your memory stick into it and play your pre-recorded music through the stereo system in the boat. The other locations in the boat don't have that function. So if you've got a memory stick, got some music you want to play, you plug it in right down here. We've talked about the windlass, and now we're going to talk about the optional electric seat. This is a new option for Cobalt. It's available on many, many models, and of course the new R6s and 8s, and you can go forward and back electrically, and you can also go up and down. So it's a really nice feature so you can tune the boat into your particular style of boating. Let's move on to the throttle control right over here. This of course is your forward neutral reverse, and uh, with the Volvo Silent Shift, you have to get used to that a little bit because there is no clunk or anything when you put it in or out of gear. It's very smooth and very silent. So incorporated in this shift handle is a couple things that are very important. One is your trim control. The trim is the attitude of the drive unit and that controls the way the boat runs. When you accelerate from start, you want the drive all the way down because that helps pull the nose of the boat down quicker and get the boat to planing, planing speed quicker. Once you get up and running, you can run the trim up a little bit and you can feel the boat 
change its attitude a little bit. And you can also see it on the speedometer. At uh, three-quarter throttle force, let's use as, a, as an example, you can pick up two or three miles an hour by simply changing the position of the trim. It also makes a difference in the way the boat rides. There again, it's one of those things where you want to spend some time playing with that trim angle when you're out running. On the throttle control, there are several things that are very important. There's a button, or not a button, but an indication at the top that tells you if you're in neutral or not. Then there's a tow button with a plus and minus switch right above it. With that, you can push tow and a light will come on and it will chirp. And then you can vary the speed of the engine by 50 RPM at a time, which is really nice when you're just trying to dial in a particular speed. Rather than jockeying the throttle back and forth, if you want just 50 RPM, which is almost nothing, you just push the up and down button and that will take care of that for you. Below that is cruise, which is an option. And the last one is trim assist, which the boat comes with as standard equipment. When you push the trim assist button, you hear that chirp that just happened. We have programmed the trim system from the factory to automatically run that power trim based on the boat's speed. It is set up for optimum performance. So the beauty of the trim assist is that you don't have to do anything with this button. All you want to do is make sure that the drive is all the way down when you're idling away from the marina. And then once you get out and you start accelerating, that drive unit will change its position automatically based on the speed of the boat. So you don't have to do it. It's really nice when you get an unexperienced driver behind the wheel because they don't have to worry about using the power trim. Obviously you know how to do it, but your friends might not. So if you're trying to show them your boat and let them drive it, etc., they don't have to mess with the power trim. It's done automatically. Or you can turn it off. Once again, it'll double chirp that time and you can run your trim from right here. And that's from all the way down to all the way up for trailering. Just this one rocker switch right here. The last thing about this throttle control is safety. This is an ignition lanyard. When you're in the boat, running the boat, you want this attached to your body someplace, to a zipper pull, to your belt, to a pocket, whatever. The idea is that should something happen and you get away from the steering and can't get back to your throttle when you need to, when you pull this tight, it pulls this out of the control and the engine shuts off immediately, shuts her down. It's a safety feature. It's always good to use it, but especially if you're in the boat alone. So it's a good idea to get into the habit of just clipping it to your body and you know it's there and ready to go. When the engine is turned off that way, above an idle, it's pretty hard on the engine. So when you push this back in, it snaps in place just like that. You go to restart the engine. If it doesn't start easily or right away, call your cobalt dealer and ask them for some advice. You don't want to damage the engine by trying to start it when there may be some other problem. So it should start right up, but if it doesn't, call your dealer and ask them for advice on exactly how to correct the problem. But it's a really good safety feature. Get into the habit of putting it on your body every time you get into the driver's seat. Working our way to the back of the boat, naturally we come to the sun deck, walkthrough area, and swim platform. Let's talk about the sun deck for a moment. This seat is hinged, fore and aft. When it's in the aft position, it gives you great lounging inside the boat cockpit. When you rock it forward, it gives you great lounging facing aft. Behind that is a cushion that flips up. greatest place in the world to watch the kids swim or whatever. Please be advised that you cannot use this area when the boat is underway. So before you even start the engine, have people that are back here lounging and enjoying to move into the cockpit of the boat because it is the law. You cannot use this area when the engine's running. To lower this, there's a simple panel right here that you just lift up on a little bit. 
and it goes back down. In the walkthrough area, we have a really neat storage container. Great place to throw wet towels, bathing suits, and so forth without bringing that moisture into the boat. It self-drains to the bilge where the pump can take it over the side. That is a lockable container, as they all are. In this storage container over here, one of the things we pointed out earlier is the ski toe is stored there. This ski toe is solid stainless steel and therefore will not float. So if you drop it in the lake, it's gone. So hang on to it. And it simply drops into this hole right here and you screw it in place. And you screw it down just where it's finger tight. You don't have to put a wrench on it or anything of that nature, but you need it screwed in there a few times so that it won't come loose while you're underway. Please be advised that you cannot install this ski toe in place with the motor box anything but down. You have to have the motor box completely lowered as it is right now to use this ski toe. If you try to raise it with the ski toe in place, it's going to damage the upholstery as it comes up trying to get around that ski toe. So just when you're done using it, unscrew it, store it back away. One of the really nice features of the Cobalt swim platform area is Cobalt's flip down step, which we brought to the market many years ago. It's now available in the manual mode as this boat has, or with the push of a button, there is now an electric version. So it's really slick. It's a great place to lounge in the water on a nice warm afternoon. And a side note, it's a great place for your animals to reboard the boat. They will learn very quickly how to climb up on that, flip down, and up on here on the platform, do their shaking out here, and then go into the boat. It's a really nice feature. So it just enhances this entire swim platform area. Well, that's it on the new Cobalt R6 and R8s. Wonderful new boat from Cobalt. But the best part is not what we've been talking about today. The best part is what this boat does in the water, untied from the dock. It is a fantastic boat. Handling, ride characteristics, noise levels, it's just wonderful. Don't forget your Cobalt dealer can answer any questions that might come up, either now or in the future. They are the experts. They know these boats as well as we do at Cobalt. Thanks for your time. Enjoy boating.